everybody. Hi, this is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. And here we go. Welcome to show number 75, can you believe it, of Beetle News Briefs. I'm your host, Steve Marinucci, and this is your home for all the news you need to know and all the best talk from the Beatle world. Uh, today we have kind of a mixed bag. We're going to have a review of Ringo's new album that's just hit the streets today, plus the latest chart news, plus, as usual, our usual report of Beatle news. And here we go with that. The Beatles last week announced the singles collection of vinyl box set coming November 22nd with 23 singles complete with sleeves from different countries. The singles will include an an exclusive new double-A side single for the mid-1990s issue tracks Free as a Bird and Real Love, the set all newly cut for vinyl from their original mono and stereo master tapes by Sean McGee at Abbey Road Studios. Includes a 40-page booklet with essays by Beatles historian Kevin Hollett, who you remember did the excellent work on the BBC tapes. And you can find a, a buy link for this on our That's What I Want Beatles page on Facebook. A set of Beatle autographs discovered in a Wrexham cupboard that's in the UK have sold at auction for 4,200 pounds or roughly $5,396 USD reports the BBC. The signatures had been hidden away for 56 years because the owner did not want to expose them to light. Ringo Starr released a new album today, uh, his 20th studio album, What's My Name? As usual, he has a lot of his usual friends helping out, including Paul McCartney, Joe Walsh, Edgar Winter, Dave Stewart, Ben Montench, Steve Lugather, Nathan East, Colin Hay, Richard Page, and Warren Hamm. As with his most recent albums, uh, it's the music that matters here. The accent is on what's in the studio, not the lyrics, which is more McCartney's bag. Um, the song that got a lot of attention when the album was announced was his new version of John Lennon's Grow Old With Me, which will which features Paul McCartney. It's a very understated version with Paul not as prominent in that song as he was on Walk With You on Why Not, which I thought was a wonderful song uh, that the two of them did together. Grow Old With Me, however, is a very nice love song for his wife, Barbara. Um, it's a... So it and uh, it's a great tribute to John too. What's my name? The title song is a rousing song that features Joe Walsh, his brother-in-law, very prominently. That will certainly be a part of Ringo's future tours. Um, there's also a cover of Money, the song covered by the Beatles, that unfortunately features some auto tune, and for that reason, Ringo's version won't make you forget the Beatles. Um, but we hope it's the last time Ringo uses autotune. It really does not sound good with anybody. It didn't sound good with Paul. It doesn't sound good with Ringo. So please know more of that. The rest of the songs include more of the usual calls of peace and love. Uh, Thank God for Music brings to mind the Beach Boys. That's why God made the radio. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of peace and love on, on the songs that evident. All in all, What's My Name won't grab a lot of headlines. But it's what Ringo, Ringo likes to do, play music with his friends, as he does in the All-Star Band. And at 79, we're so happy that he can do it, and he's happy doing what he does. So I don't feel left out. What's my name? Ringo! I so saw three of you didn't join in. What's my name? Ringo! That's better. Paul McCartney teamed up this week with PETA, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, for a new animated video for his song, Looking for Changes. I'm looking for changes that will continue the momentum of getting animals out of laboratories, McCartney said in a statement. Experiments on animals are unethical. They're a colossal failure and a waste of time and money. We can and must do better. The video shows McCartney and his animal friends demanding changes from government representatives. McCartney also donated a set of 14 photographs taken by his late wife, Linda McCartney, to the Glasgow Museums. Three of the photos were taken in Scotland. The photos include famous musicians and family photos. An exhibit of her photos, curated by Paul and daughters Mary and Stella, is currently on exhibit at Kelvin Grove Art Museum and Gallery in the UK until January 12th of next year. 
The George Harrison Twitter account, meanwhile, has been recently tweeting magazine covers with George's picture on them. The most recent is the Rolling Stone with the report on the concert for Bangladesh, which shows George on stage. Former Beatle drummer Pete Best returned to Liverpool's Matthew Street this week to unveil a new mural inside the magical Beatles Museum there. The museum, which is owned by the Best family, opened up last summer and has over 500 items on exhibit over four floors. The Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp is holding a special Beatles version that will feature Denny Sywell of Wings and Alan White of the Plastic Ono Band and Yes, along with Beatles engineer producer uh, Eddie Kramer, and a live finale featuring Trick Treat. Uh, Cheap Trick members Robin Zander, Tom Peterson, Rick Nielsen, love that guitar, Rick, and Dax Nielsen of uh, performing their Sgt. Pepper live show with camp attendees at the famous Whiskey A Go Go. The drum spots are sold out, but you can still be John, George, or Paul, or even Billy Preston. You can find out more at www.rockcamp.com. And we'll be right back. How would you define Beatlemania? I couldn't define it. You know, a lot of people have tried. I'm, I'm not going to try. Leave it to the psychologists and let them get it wrong. Some chart news on the Billboard 200 this week. Abbey Road is at 24, down 11 spots from last week. And the Beatles 1 is at number 61, down from 59 the previous week. On the Artist 100, the Beatles are at 24, down from 10 last week. In the UK, on officialcharts.com, Abbey Road is 13, down 7 spots from last week. On the album 100, while the Beatles 1 is number 45, down three spots. On the UK Vinyls album, album chart, uh, Abbey Road is at number 5, the same as last week. And two Beatle albums returned to the vinyl chart this week, Sgt. Pepper at 23 and the White Album at 29. Four Metropolitan Police in London were discovered posing on the Abbey Road crosswalk at 2.30 in the morning, as reported by the Metro newspaper in London. Another was in the middle of the road holding a camera to capture the whole thing uh, as a picture. It was caught, however, by the 24-hour webcam that's there. The police, when officially informed, said, We expect our officer officers to behave professionally at all time times. Since we can't identify the officers from the image, it's possible they may have been on a break or off duty at the time. Well, we saw the picture. They were in uniform, so take it from there. A recent Twitter post from Yoko Ono. They say the evening light is sacred. Well, in my book, every moment in our lives is sacred and incredibly enjoyable. I feel grateful that we have so many beautiful moments in our lives. That's one thing about Yoko's posts. They are all positive, very positive. Um, and that's it for now. Remember, you can find our shows on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcast. Look for our Beatle News and Information Group on Facebook and join us And for all the uh, news and information that comes. And also check out our That's What I Want Beatle Store page on Facebook for great deals for yourself or your favorite Beatle fans. And link to, and you'll also find links to my ebook on Davy Jones of the Monkeys and Candy Leonard's Beatleness. Candy Leonard is the contributing editor of this podcast. And if you like us, please subscribe. We'll be looking for you. Till next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying... Be seeing you. that one market fab <laughs>